Hello and Namaste. On the occasion of the World Menopause Day, let us discuss a few things of importance and relevance about menopause. I am Dr. Sudha Tandon, a gynec endoscopic surgeon and IVF consultant practicing at Mumbai and Navi Mumbai. You know, women live for one third of their lives in the postmenopausal period. And menopause brings about such dramatic changes in almost all the functions of their body. And I think it's important that each woman knows about these changes, knows what can be done about it and how one can prevent it and lead a very healthy life even in the postmenopausal period. Now the word menopause comes from the Greek word where it says that the monthly periods have paused. So does the life of a woman also pause? No, not really. The age where a woman can attain menopause is from 45 to 55 years, the average being 50. Thinner women, women who smoke and women who are malnourished may get a menopause earlier. So basically what happens at menopause? Well, the woman just stops getting her monthly periods. Now, before the menopause, she is in the reproductive period. That means her ovaries have two important functions to perform. One is of reproduction and the other is of release of hormones, which is the female hormones, the estrogen and progestogen. Now, after menopause, it is these estrogens and progestogens which are not released from the ovaries and this causes all the problem. So between her reproductive period and menopause there is a period which is called as perimenopause. This can occur for few years before the actual menopause sets in. And what is actual menopause is absolute stopping of periods. So in the perimenopause she could have irregular periods, she could have all menopausal symptoms by which one can uh, think that she is going into menopause and all these symptoms need to be taken care of. Menopause is where she stops getting her periods. She should not get her periods for 12 months before we say that she is menopausal. And after that period is the period of postmenopause. So what are the changes which occur in the body because of menopause? Well, the reproductive organs, the internal and the external reproductive organs, the ovaries, they shrink, the fallopian tube shrink, the epithelium becomes uh, atrophic, the uterus and the cervix becomes almost one is to one proportion, the uterus becomes absolutely atrophic, the epithelium of the vagina also becomes atrophic, the vulva also shrinks, the breast tissue, also the fat in the breast tissue shrinks and it, they can even sag. The cardiovascular risks or the hypertension, all these also increase. She tends to put on some weight and the skin becomes atrophic. She may have dry skin, she can even have hair fall. The genitourinary changes also occur. There are changes in the genitourinary system also and she is more prone for repeated urinary tract infections. So this menopause is could be either a natural menopause or it could be a premature menopause. Let's say a woman gets a menopause at the age of 40. So this is where she's got a premature menopause or it could be a surgical menopause where either a hysterectomy or both her ovaries have to be removed surgically and uh, she experiences all the symptoms because of a sudden lack of the estrogens and progestogens which are being produced by the ovary. Another important change which is extremely important, absolutely relevant and one needs to take care is the changes in the skeletal system. So there is muscle loss, the bone also loses the bone tissue and the, the incidence of osteoporosis is extremely common after the menopause and this really needs to be taken care of by regular exercise, taking uh, calcium and lifestyle changes. So what are the symptoms of menopause? These can start in the perimenopausal period and they're really very troublesome. The severity of symptoms differ from woman to woman. 
So the most important symptom is the hot flashes. She'll suddenly feel a wave of heat and after that she'll start feeling cold. She may even feel hot even if the AC is on. So these are hot flashes. She could have night sweats or even sleep disturbances. For some reason, she, was, she would say that she's not getting her sleep what she was, she was getting before. Genitourinary changes, uh, because of the changes in the genitourinary system, uh, she's um, more prone for getting repeated UTI or urinary tract infections. The psychological symptoms, it is she may not realize or her uh, family members would tell that she's irritable. There could be incessant crying or anxiety depression she she should she would not be interested in what she was already doing or a lack of confidence so all this needs to be taken into account that probably that she's going through her menopause and this can be really corrected there could be symptoms which of which would concern her about the skin the skin becomes very dry atrophic and she could even have hair loss about sexual history, she would not be interested in having sex, especially because the vagina becomes very dry and having sex with a partner would become painful. She would also have some psychological problems and cognitive behavior problems. And later on, it is the bone problems which are very, which are very commonly seen. The osteoporosis comes up very late after menopause, almost five or 10 years after menopause. And for that, she needs to take care even so how does one diagnose that a woman has become menopausal? Most important, she doesn't get her periods for 12 months. And then if she doesn't get her periods for 12 months, we are very sure that she is menopausal. So the menopausal symptoms are very suggestive. And then if you do her blood test, especially her serum FSH and LH, it would be elevated. Her serum estradiol levels would be on the lesser side. What are the health tips that you would like to give to a woman who is experiencing menopausal symptoms? I think the woman herself and her partner and all in the family should be contributing to uh, taking care of the woman and all her symptoms. They should be actively involved and be really concerned about it. So to take care of hot flushes and night sweats, you should be in a very comfortable room especially with an AC or a fan on. She should wear light cotton clothing. She could replace her coffee and tea by some natural juices. To reduce her vaginal dryness, she can use some uh, moisturizing agents. She can also use estrogen creams to take care of the dry vagina. To control her urinary incontinence, she can practice pelvic floor exercises, which will take care and strengthen her pelvic floor and she could really reduce her intensity of frequent mixtuation and repeated urinary tract infections. To prevent osteoporosis, which is a very important problem because of menopause, lifestyle changes are extremely important. If she's not exercising before, she can start with regular walks for some time, which can be increased to a period of one hour also. Most important exercise is the weight-bearing exercises which will maintain the strength of her bone and also build the muscle mass. Because of this, she will not have osteoporosis or delay the occurrence of osteoporosis. Another important factor would be if she's smoking to reduce smoking. Also take care of her diet and have a healthy diet which includes good amount of cal natural calcium and which will take care of her osteoporosis. Also reduce the fat intake, increase the protein intake in her diet and this will also go a long way in making her healthy. She should keep herself busy by having more of social interactions either through WhatsApp or any of the social media uh, ways on in which she is busy. She can also start pursuing a hobby and really take it seriously. She can go into music or dance and that's how she can keep herself busy. Meditation and relaxation also play a very important role in having a positive impact on her health and her moods. To take care of her cardiovascular problems, she should take healthy diet, exercise regularly, go for regular checkups from the health point of view, Take her BP medications if she's hypertensive, maintain her weight 
and regular exercises are of prime importance. What about hormone replacement therapy? Well, there is a lot of uh, coverage about uh, hormone replacement therapy in the media, on social media, in press, etc. But let me tell you that it is an excellent way of tackling menopausal problems, especially if it is indicated, especially in women who have a premature menopause or who are active and who do not have any contraindication for giving hormonal replacement therapy. So what are the contraindications for hormonal replacement therapy? Women who is overweight, who smokes, who has cardiovascular problems, who has liver problems, who has history of a deep vein thrombosis in the past, or a woman who has a history of endometrial cancer or breast cancer. So these are the women who are not to be given hormone replacement therapy. But majority of the women who are healthy, who are of uh, good weight, who are not overweight, and who do not have any of these comorbidities can be given uh, hormone replacement therapy even for a period of 10 years. Hormone replacement therapy is a very good way of treatment of menopausal symptoms, especially night sweats, heart flushes, osteoporosis, sexual problems and genital urinary problems. So I think it is important that as an individual one must decide whether you need to take hormone replacement therapy and not go for any blanket way of uh, you know being scared of taking hormone replacement therapy. So what are the various ways of giving hormones? Most common are the oral estrogen medications which need to be taken on a daily basis. So if if a woman has a uterus intact, she takes a dose of estrogen all throughout and the last uh, in a month if she takes let's say from the first day of the, of the month for about 18 days or 20 days and after that she takes progesterone for about 12 to 14 days so she has a withdrawal bleeding. So the estrogen will continue every day and the progesterone will come in the latter part of the cycle. If she doesn't have a uterus, if she's had a hysterectomy done in the past, then she can just take estrogen and that will suffice because it is the estrogen deficiency which causes all the problems. Now this hormone replacement can be also given by using patches. They can also be given by giving implants or by creams. And these are very good ways of giving a hormone replacement therapy. If the woman has more of vaginal symptoms or urinary symptoms, there are good estrogen creams which are available which will not have any systemic side effects and can be easily used and really it works very well. So in short, one should not really be scared of menopause. One should take it in her stride and take it as an opportunity of being free of her regular periods. Take care of your health, go for regular checkups, go for regular blood tests, go for regular pap smears, go for regular sonographies, regular ECGs and regular checkups from a health point of view. Take care of your health, take care of your diet, do exercises on a regular basis and you will see miraculous change in your body and you will be really wondering as to why you are thinking that menopause is all associated with problems. So friends, do not take menopause as something drastic, as something which is you have to be really scared of because of all its problems. You must take it as a normal physiological process and in fact, take it as an opportunity to have a positive change in your lifestyle. Eat healthy, maintain your weight, do regular exercise, maybe take up a hobby like singing or dancing, which you've been always wanting to do. Focus more on your career and maybe go for regular social outings and holidays and vacations. So, so as you see that menopause can be really taken care of and one should not be worried as to its health implications. I hope I've made a difference in all our lives by this video. If you have liked the video, kindly subscribe to our channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for your time.